New attractions are coming to Singapore, including a museum of ice cream that has a sprinkle pool. What a difference 12 months makes is exactly a year to the date Singapore went into the circuit breaker. And 18 primary and secondary schools are set to merge as student numbers continue to fall. Welcome to The Big Story, coming to you live from The Straits Times Newsroom. I'm Olivia Kui. And I'm Hairian Tudiman. You can subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you never miss a single episode. Now, instead of waiting for international borders to reopen, Singapore needs to disrupt the status quo. And for tourism here, the next big moves lie in sustainable travel solutions, technological innovation and holistic wellness. Speaking at the Tourism Industry Conference today, Minister for Trade and Industry Chan Chun Singh said our tourism sector already faced disruption even before the pandemic. And the challenge is how Singapore will prepare for the long-term future. To that end, the government will pump $68.5 million into the Tourism Development Fund on which businesses can tap if they want to explore new areas like sustainability. Mr Chan also said that the tourism sector should leverage technology and to support industry players in their digital transformation, STB launched its new innovation platform, the Tourism Technology Transformation Cube, that will serve as a go-to resource for these businesses. Meanwhile, we can all look forward to four new attractions from this year. Ice cream lovers, you'll be in for a treat with the Museum of Ice Cream opening in the second half of 2021. Located in the Dempsey area, visitors can enjoy multi-sensory installations like the sprinkle pool. For adrenaline junkies, not like myself, <laughs> there'll be a new thrill ride in Club Key. Touted as the tallest in Asia, the slingshot will see riders being catapulted almost 70 metres into the air, reaching a speed of 160 kilometres per hour. And for a romantic night out, look out for the Sky Helix Sentosa, where you can enjoy a drink on a rotating platform while taking in views stretching from Sentosa to the Capel Bay area. The last one still in the works is a new attraction at the vacant site between Somerset Skate Park and Killiney Road. It's part of a plan to test bed new concepts in Orchard Road. Let's discuss this with the Chairman of the Association of Singapore Attractions, Kevin Cheong. Good to see you again, Kevin. So what's your reaction to what Minister right. Tan Chun uh, Singh and STB CEO Keith Tan said today? Do you think the tourism revival strategy has changed? Well, I think the tourism revival strategy in terms of the destination strategy has not. It's going back to fundamentals. It's going back to the basics of what, a tour, what makes a destination. It's about authenticity. It is about celebrating what we as Singaporeans take for granted, what we as Singaporeans take as our everyday lives. So I think tourists wants to see what makes Singapore tick, what makes Singapore where it is today. So we need to celebrate our authenticity presented, and like what uh, Minister said, we need to market it that, uh, we need to be able to promote that very well. Mm. How do you feel about the current state of our tourism industry, given that more measures have been relaxed and the Singapore rediscovers vouchers? Well, I think it is a real question that I'm asking myself, about what 20 odd percent of the redemptions have been made. Um, what's driving, what will drive the other 80 percent to visit uh, attractions or use their vouchers for a staycation? Um, it's coming back to, well, if freebies don't work, what will? So, is, is Singapore's attractions and, and our products too touristy? That's a question which I'm asking myself right now, and, and I'm quite bothered by that. Um, but at the same time, when we start looking at the current situation, what's life going to be after the SRVs, right? Uh, when there are no more uh, incentives to come, uh, freebies, um, and uh, the borders are still shut, what happens next? That is very bothersome right now. Right. Um, Kevin, what is your association's medium to long-term plans for attractions in Singapore? And do you think these plans will um, be reworked based on the announcements made today? Well, the association has gone back to the drawing board because we're really looking at a few things. One, digital, dig, digitalization of how do we promote ourselves, especially for the post-arrival visitor. But 
also this thing about the resident visitor, right? How do we reach out to them? I think the past one year has helped us recalibrate this and, and we, are, we are working with our members with STB also. Uh, how do we address this into the mid, short and medium term? Longer term, we're also looking at the skill sets of the future. Yes, I know uh, Minister talked about storytelling. He talked about um, this, this use of digital marketing. But for our frontline staff, I think it's no longer just about service. I'd like to, we, we're, we're looking at what we call HSSS, which is health, safety, security, and service. The multi-role, the multi-tasking and the multi-skills of our frontline is very important. Um, and we see that our frontline will become, or at least I believe now is emerging to be what we call the first responders. If there is a crisis, there is a situation, a pandemic, somebody who's ill, somebody needs help, our frontline service staff are actually our first responders. And that's where we're driving towards. And another thing about um, what we're trying to do with not only the association, but also helping our members is to how to weave in the sustainability story. And how do we tell people uh, about our sustainability efforts? Because now the visit to a visitor attraction needs to be multidimensional. It's not just about fun, but I think it's about mindful fun. It's about being conscious about what else can I do uh, to contribute to, to um, the environment, uh, about nature, conservation. So all these things that we've been thinking about for the past year, augments well with, with what Minister and, and Keith mentioned um, and I think that I think that's really uh, given us the, the confidence to say yes we're in the right direction. Also announced today Singapore will have four new attractions with one still being in plan. Uh, can we get your quick assessment of the other three? Well any new product, any new experience adds to the landscape. Whilst, yes, we are competitors to some extent, but it's the variety of experiences, the depth of the various experiences that we have in Singapore that makes us vibrant as a destination, not just for the tourist, but also for the resident, because it also shows confidence of these new investors, new products coming on stream, that there is a future. However, my, my personal biggest issue is um, these are what I would call... Um, well, it can be what I call a me too product. That means, you know, it, it takes, sucks up the landscape and all that, but it, is this an authentically Singapore experience? Well, I hope we can try to make it more authentic, more original and more Singaporean. Well, thank you so much for setting aside time to speak with us today, Kevin. We've been speaking with Kevin Chong, Chairman of the Association of Singapore Attractions. There's a new certification for the meetings, incentives, conventions and exhibitions sector which will ensure that large-scale events like the World Economic Forum in August are conducted in a safe manner. If they meet strict benchmarks and best practices in areas like hygiene and sanitization, safe distancing and emergency management, event organizers, venue owners and suppliers can display the SG Safe Events Certification as a mark of assurance to the global community. This provisional standard goes beyond current government mandates Dated safe management measures. One community case was among the 35 new COVID-19 infections confirmed today. The remaining 34 were imported and placed on stay-home notice when they arrived in Singapore. More details will be released later tonight. Precisely one year ago, Singapore entered our circuit breaker, but it feels like such a long <laughs> time has passed. Exactly. I don't think any of us want to ever go back to that yeah. period. It's, it's crazy, right? Like, you know, to, to imagine how far we have come since mm. then, but how much further that we have to go. And it's actually something we'll be talking uh, about with our news editor just in a little bit. And, you know, behaviour has changed since the circuit breaker mm. because according to a Straits Times survey, 61% of the 1,000 respondents said they now socialise less frequently with those outside their immediate family compared with before the circuit breaker. 44% also reported that their social circles outside of their immediate family shrunk over the past year. Now thinking back to that time, of course, empty places come to mind. Here's a look at what a difference a year makes.
As we mark this milestone, news editor Karamjit Kaur, who's been spearheading the Straits Times' COVID-19 coverage, is here with us. Karam, welcome to the show. Now, Karam, a guest we had earlier this week now said that we shouldn't waste a good crisis. How far have we come and how much further do we have to go while making sure we avoid a return to the circuit breaker period? Right. Um, how far have we come? I think it's hard to believe it's been a year. Yeah. Um, you know, to, today. It feels much longer, right? It, it does, absolutely. Um, April the 7th. I think when you want to look at how far we've come, I would start with vaccines. Um, I mean, you know, this time last year, the focus really was on managing uh, infections, trying to keep, you know, the number of uh, cases down. We all went into a lockdown. Uh, one year later, we have, you know, more than 900,000 uh, Singapore residents have received at least one dose of the you know vaccine either the Pfizer or the Moderna uh, so when it comes to um, vaccines Singapore has come a, a very long way and really what what a difference a year has has made if you look at the economy this year of course you know more people are returning to the workplaces with the new guidelines but you know work from home still it's, it's not the default anymore but uh, you know there's, there's been a permanent shift almost mm. Um, you know, in, in this one year, we all started out um, almost being forced to work from home, but I think it's moved to a new normal. I don't see that changing, actually. Um, I don't expect that people are going to want to go back to, you know, the days when we used to come to the office every day. And, and that's the sense that we get on the ground when we speak to companies. And um, we probably, you know, people are going to settle into this, maybe coming back two times a week, three times a week. They found new ways of working and they find that they can be uh, just as effective. Mm. Um, economy, you see a lot more opening up. You know, if you remember um, a year ago, in, uh, April, at, you know, at the peak of the infections in the foreign worker dormitories, for example, migrant worker dormitories. Today, you see many more of them uh, working. You know, construction has started, road projects, other projects. One thing that has not moved or has moved very little is probably travel. Mm. I think that's something that uh, you know people are still griping about i mean we've had we had many um episodes where people you know the level of excitement rose very high you know we keep talking about the singapore hong kong travel bubble but you know we all know what happened there like last minute the bubble burst and there's you know there remains a lot of talk right about vaccine passports and mm -hmm. uh, certificates and um, singapore airlines is doing trials and all that so a lot of um, activity there but at the end of the day people are still not traveling so not much has changed uh, there when it comes to travel so, okay, we still have quite a long way to go before we emerge from you know, the pandemic and all of that. Um, but it's important to mark today and the year that we've had. ST has asked readers to share you know, how the circuit breaker has changed their lives, whether it's uh, adopting a healthier lifestyle, picking up a new hobby, or even starting a new business. So, Karam, what other stories were submitted? Right. So, yeah, so we sort of started out doing two, two things. One is that we went out and we commissioned a poll, surveyed a thousand people. And I think the general uh, sort of uh, consensus is that people uh, say that they, they've been working a lot harder. Working from home for many actually means working more, you know, longer hours. There's, there's no night, there's no day. A good number of them uh, also said that, they are, that they've been socialising less outside of their you know, immediate um, family circle and all. Um, and yes, we also asked readers to write in to us to tell us um, you know, how th th those t almost two months of being in circuit breaker sort of changed their lives. And we were actually quite hearted. I mean, we did get quite a, a good number of people writing in to us. And I think generally, um, they sort of fall into a few categories. Um, many people started exercising, you know, so you, we get all these stories about people who were very happy. They lost two kilos and some of them said they lost five kilos. And uh, we had featured a nurse who had actually lost 15 kilos. So, so you know. Um, and I think the stories also have inspired um, others to you know, also want to do the same. Um, a good number of them talk about how they actually um, have become closer to their families, you know, because you spend more time at home and you get to know your children better and you get to know your spouses better. So that's been a, a, a positive. So I think this, this, this whole year has been about people um, sort of like um, finding themselves. Uh, finding new ways to do uh, things and I think people sort of deciding, sort of realising that you know it's kind of been like a tough year but some things have actually been better and they found new ways of doing things and so t truly we've moved to a new normal. Um, how far do we have to go? I, it's still a long way if you want to talk about you know pre-pandemic but like I said earlier I, I don't, I think some things are just going to stay like this. 
Well, Karam, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. That was Karam Jitko, a news editor for The Straits Times. For nine people, the circuit breaker has had lasting effects. Now, among them, a Singapore Airlines stewardess is now caring for elderly patients. And as Karam mentioned, a nurse lost 15 kilograms and, of course, three friends dared to open a bar during the pandemic. Circuit Breaker has changed my perspective on my health. Circuit Breaker taught me to think out of the box. The Circuit Breaker made me realise that simple things in life um, can make you happy. The circuit Breaker changes the way I do my business selling photo peering. The Circuit Breaker completely changed my perspective on how to open a successful food and beverage business. Circuit Breaker changed my view on personal time and who I choose to spend my personal time with. Circuit Breaker changed my perspective on what a F&B business can be. I think the Circuit Breaker really changed the way that my life's rhythms worked. The Circuit Breaker changed my perspective of possibilities and opportunities. To me, the biggest take takeaway was like the importance of spending time with family. One thing the pandemic definitely taught me was to appreciate everything that we had. Just our freedom, the ability to go out whenever we want. It showed me that I was more hopeful than I ever thought I was. Never be afraid to try something new, no matter how old you are. And then always think positive, because nothing is impossible. As long as you have the capability, just get it started. Um, there's this saying where it is better to have tried and failed than never to try at all. You can read more stories in today's paper or on the website as part of the Straits Times' special coverage on the Circuit Breaker one year on. There are some incredible then and now pictures as well. How do you feel about Singapore reaching this milestone? Do let us know in the comments below. In other local headlines, unemployment rates here dropped for the fourth consecutive month in February as the economy recovers. A Manpower Ministry report today showed that unemployment rate fell to 3% in February, down from 3.2% in the month before. In a Facebook post, Manpower Minister Josephine Teo said that although the unemployment rates remain elevated and have not yet returned to pre-COVID-19 levels, the government is seeing good progress with jobs growth. But she cautioned that with every dip in the unemployment rate, the next drop will likely be harder to achieve. Another 18 primary and a secondary schools will be merged over the next three years as student enrolment continues to shrink due to falling birth numbers. Tree Inc. Primary School and Pioneer Primary School will be combined next year. This is coming earlier than the rest to make way for the Jurong Region Line MRT extension. This merged school is expected to relocate from January 2025 and will be the first primary school in the Tunga area. Another 16 schools will be merged later, 14 in 2023 and 2 in in 2024. Well, if you're looking to watch the Oscars, it will be on Channel 5. The red carpet segment will begin at 6.30 a.m. on April 26th and a ceremony from 8 a.m. This Oscars is notable for its Asian representation with actors Steven Yeon, Yeon Yoo Jing and Riz Ahmed nominated for acting awards. Minari's Lee Isaac Chung and Nomadland's Chloe Zhao are also in the running for Best Director. Well, those are our top stories for today. For more news and videos, visit straightstimes.com and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the red button below. Once again, I'm Harianto Diman with Bolivia Kuei. Join us tomorrow for more stories on The Big Story.